Hello, and welcome to this presentation, which is sponsored by the NIAAA Certification Committee. If you are viewing this, congratulations. As you are preparing for the Certified Athletic Administrator's Examination, a 100-question multiple choice exam. The attainment of professional certification demonstrates the completion of a comprehensive plan for professional growth and self-improvement that will enhance the ability of the athletic administrator to better serve all constituents. Professional certification will result in a genuine sense of accomplishment and confidence. I'm Sherry Stice, Certification Coordinator for the NIAAA. It is our goal at the NIAAA to provide our members with as many resources as we can to assist our members in their pathway to success. Okay, let's get started. The next three slides will have a breakdown of the number of questions uh, that are included in the exam. So let's quickly review these. And as you can see in this slide, we've actually broken down the number of questions per each leadership training course. And again, there are 100 questions, multiple choice, and you will need to pass with 75% accuracy. So let's get started. In order to be in compliance with Title IX, Interscholastic athletic programs are required to provide all of the following except, in this regard, I would say, please read the question carefully. And your answer, question number one, If you answered C, equal monies for overall operations of men and women's programs, you would be correct. Demonstrating consistency between long-range plans and annual budget request. And your best answer reflects credible budget policy. Good job. One authority which issues coaching certification is the NFHS, the National Federation of High Schools. In order to help young coaches keep winning in perspective, an athletic administrator should emphasize that coaches develop a philosophy And your best answer? Of putting the best educational interest of athletes first and winning second. Sample question number five. Successful management of interscholastic athletic contest depends on And your answer, educating the community with respect to philosophy, objectives, and standards of the athletic program. Next question. The failure to exercise reasonable care and prudence expected of a coach is...
negligence. I want to take this opportunity to remind you to review the glossary of terms in your 504 Legal Issues 1 manual. Question number seven. The proper treatment for an injury that results in bleeding always includes putting on latex gloves prior to administering care. Question number eight. As it is applied to student athletes, the term due process And as you remember, my suggestion about reading your glossary is a constitutional right guaranteed to all. Question number nine. The following should be considered when developing a supplemental fundraising program. And the answer, revenue potential, safety, community relations, and workability of the program. It might be a good time for me to add a caveat at this point and talk to you about the test in general because you need to look at this test as the result of your study in 501, 502, 504 and 506. Remember that you are not looking at your school district or your individual situation. You are looking at, at best practices and standards of care with regard to the core classes that you've taken. Question number 10. The involvement of students and school leaders in a cooperative effort to develop sportsmanship guidelines is an effective strategy for promoting sportsmanship within a school. General school administration periods of time should be used by athletic administration. And the answer, for long-range goal setting, planning, and professional improvement. An athlete who suffers loss of consciousness for any length of time during a competition and best practices and standards of care indicate should be removed from the competition and evaluated by a physician before being allowed to return to the activity. Question 13. The legal theory which apportions percentages of responsibility for injury or loss for individuals involved in negligence litigation is comparative negligence. One more time, I want to remind you, check that glossary in 504. A democratic leadership style is and a democratic leader 
emphasizes cooperative, shared, and collegial decision making. A comprehensive set of policies, standards, and procedures that define the operational standards for a coach throughout a sports season should be the major portion of the coach's handbook. Recommending regulations and standards to guide the conduct of high school athletic programs is the purpose of the National Federation. An example of poor time management for the athletic administrator would involve procrastination of duties. School fees levied on families and or athletes used to offset the gross cost and an athletic program are your answer participation fees doing a great job question 19 fulfilling professional responsibilities with honesty and integrity is part of the NIAAA Code of Ethical and Professional Standards. Booster clubs should Booster clubs should have a written constitution and bylaws consistent with the philosophy of the school district. Which of the following are traits that should be common to all leadership styles? And your answer? Ethics and morality. You would most likely be found negligent if a court found that you distributed a piece of equipment to a player that was faulty and resulted in injury. Personnel with limited coaching experience should be Personnel with limited coaching experience should be observed, evaluated, and supervised by qualified athletic personnel until competence is demonstrated. The National Federation provides a mechanism for changing its philosophy statements and playing rules through A 
At this point, I want to remind you to review LTC 501 for information in this regard. The National Federation provides a mechanism for changing its philosophy statements and playing rules through advisory committees representing all geographic sections of the United States. The most pertinent source of information to justify an athletic budget proposal is program assessments for athletes, parents, and the community. You're doing great. We're halfway there. The role of the Booster Club, the procedures for determining its annual meeting dates, and the establishment of its voting procedures should be specified by And your answer? Constitution and bylaws developed by the athletic department, school, and community representatives. Sports administrators should set aside periods of uninterrupted time for planning, long-range goal setting, and priority deliberations. A major purpose for conducting ongoing evaluation programs should be to provide data for And your answer? Making focused improvements and to provide continued support for strong programs. 29. Philosophically, athletic participation is considered a unique learning environment because it And your answer provides educational experiences not otherwise offered in the curriculum. Individuals who coach or supervise athletic activities should And your answer, be competent to provide instruction for specific types of activity and capable responses to emergencies or injuries. The National Federation philosophy specifies that athletic participation is a privilege that may be earned when students And your best answer, achieve certain minimum standards. The budget process may present a real or implied message concerning one's administrative skill because of
in your best answer, the need to incorporate a large number of information sources such as inventories, cost, needs, and etc. Preparation of athletes for contact sports, endurance sports, gymnastics, diving, and activities conducted in elevated temperatures require And your best answer, a progression of conditioning and skill development. School board policies, regulations, and athletic rules are developed because of School board policies, regulations, and athletic rules are developed because of statutes that require local school boards to develop rules for health, safety, good order, and efficiency. An important purpose of an athletic philosophy statement is to An important purpose of an athletic philosophy statement is to state ideals and purposes that are consistent with the goals of secondary education. At this time, I'd like to direct you to LTC 502 and review of that information with regard to philosophy statements. Written emergency procedure for each facility should be posted in a highly visible area contained in the coach's handbook and and your best answer rehearsed or discussed annually as an orientation topic for coaches In a democratic society where sports programs are supported by taxation and or private funding, a primary purpose of a booster club is to the importance of our booster clubs, Provide support and supplements to traditional revenue sources. Adherence to health and safety policies, absolute time deadlines, Board of Education policies, and state or local laws may require leadership style, that is, And after reviewing all those leadership styles, the answer is autocratic. The primary purpose of the National Federation of State High School Associations is to and their purpose to recommend regulations and standards to guide the conduct of high school athletic programs. 
A high performance diet calls for athletes to eat this critical information, more carbohydrates. Why is skillful communication an essential element in becoming a successful athletic director? And the best answer, your credibility as an effective leader is enhanced. The principle of progression suggests that the body can improve as longer, more frequent, and greater resistance workouts are performed. Sexual harassment is defined as unwelcome words or actions of a sexual nature which result in harm to the victim. The type of harassment that is so severe and pervasive enough to alter the conditions of employment is classified as and study of our glossary of terms hostile environment. An effective strategy for promoting sportsmanship within school is An effective strategy for promoting sportsmanship within a school is the involvement of the students and school leaders in a cooperative effort to develop sportsmanship guidelines. Actions that are performed regardless of warnings of danger, and especially when the student athlete understands both the danger and the approved procedures, may de be defined properly as And one more time, in studying our glossary of terms, contributory negligence. Effective preventative tactics for spectator management include Best answer, a variety of methods to specify spectator expectation and the use of low profile intervention by supervisors. No person in the United States shall, on the basis of sex, be excluded from participation in, be denied the benefits of, or be subjected to discrimination under any educational program or activity receiving federal financial assistance is referred to as Title IX of the Education Amendments of 1972. Good job. Which of the following is not a method for a school to comply with the participation opportunities mandated by Title IX? OK. 
Okay, remember what we talked about with that three prongs? Very good. Equivalence of male to female athletic scholarship dollars. Breach of duty can be the result of Failing to fulfill a responsibility and performing an act that results in injury. Okay, our last question today. Concussion management should include The best answer, a gradual return to play protocol after medical clearance is received. We have completed a sampling of the types of questions in format of the exam. However, I encourage you to review LTC 501, 502, 504, and 506. You will find that the glossary of terms provided in LTC 504 are particularly helpful. Remember, in order to sit for the exam, you must have completed your personal data form, submitted to the national office, and await approval. This is an efficient process and must be completed within 30 days of a scheduled exam. Again, I congratulate you on this very important step. Good luck!